Hello everyone and welcome to the Neotech Electronics Series. This episode is about low frequency amplifier response for the bipolar junction transistor amplifier. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the low frequency amplifier response for this bipolar junction transistor amplifier. So, if you look at it, you have three capacitors, right? You have one right here on your input, right there, it's C1. You have one right here on your output, which is C3. And you have one right here, C2. And that's known as the bypass capacitor. All right, so you have three RC circuits. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about each one of these circuits in detail because each one of these circuits most likely is gonna, going to have a unique critical frequency associated with it. All right? But this is the amplifier right here, and it's pretty much the same amplifier that we've been discussing throughout this video series. Okay, so let's start with the calculation of the input critical frequency. All right, so let's start talking about the input let me uh, change the color here. So we're going to say the input critical frequency, FCL. Right? C is for critical frequency, and this is an L. It's a lowercase l. That means lower. All right? So and sometimes you'll see this. You'll have input here. I mean, it could be output. It could be the bypass. Right? It could be the emitter. But we're going to talk about the input. And if you look at the input, what do we have? We have your input coming in here. You're going through a capacitor. Now, this goes, you're going to have this come off here. And you're going to have a resistor, aren't you? Resistance, I should say. And this is R in. Now we talked about the calculation of Rn, but basically you have, if you think about your capacitor as a frequency sensitive resistor, all right, you basically have a voltage divider, don't you? So I hesitate to write a capacitor as a resistor because there's much more to a capacitor. You can have a phase shift and things like that. But for what we're talking about right here, just think about that capacitor as a frequency sensitive resistor, right? And remember that this Rn, that's going to be equal to R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with Rn, and it's an N, that's of your base. All right. Now, and this is a capacitor. I'm just going to call this one C1. All right. There you have it. Right. So now, remember, if we want to know that your base voltage, let me see. Let's call this V your base right here. Right. Let's look at your base here. So your voltage at your base is really going to equal it's going to equal Rn divided by it's going to be what Rn squared plus now you're going to have your reactants XCL C1 squared square root right 
times Vn. Now if you think about that, right, I know this this may be a little confusing, but many of you have probably already seen that. Alright, so there is your resistor. If you think of it in another way, if this is just a resistor, it would be Rn plus the this resistor over or, or Rn divided by Rn plus whatever this resistance was. But since the since it's a capacitor, you have to do it this way. Alright? By the way, just for your math, this is the same as Rn divided by Rn squared plus Xc1 squared to the one-half. The one-half and the square root are the same, all right? Now, remember, at the critical frequency, I'm going to say at FCL, all right, Rn equals the reactant X C1 equals that reactant. So you can rewrite this. That, that's the key thing to remember. Both those resistances are the same, right? Now, if you want to rewrite this, you can say that this is equal to Rn divided by Rn squared plus Rn squared, because I made it equal to XCL, right? times that whole thing there is going to be multiplied times Vn. Now this is going to equal, you can pull these, you can sum these two together, right? So it's going to be equal to Rn divided by 2R squared, right? To the 1 half which is equal to Rn divided by, you know, I, I, I use the one half there. I hope that doesn't confuse you, but it shouldn't. Two to the one half times Rn. See, this was squared. If you take the square root of a squared number, it's just that number, right? Now, you can take these and they cancel, don't they? So, in that case, this is equal to 1 divided by 2 to the 1 half, which is equal to 0. I'm, this, uh, there should be a VN here. I'm sorry, did I lose the VN? I lost the VN, that's my fault. There's a VN here. And there's a V in here, and there's a V in here. So it's going to equal to 0 0.707 times V in. All right. Isn't that great? There you go. Now remember that. Now, let's get this in terms of decibels, right? So I'm going to use this space over here. So I'm going to say in dB, remember the formula? It's 20 log, log base 10, of VB, V of your base, divided by V of your input, input, that's base, I don't want to get too fast, when I start going fast I don't write too well, <laughs> right, which is going to equal 20 log 0 0.707, that's what we just calculated, which is going to equal minus 3 dB. There you go. All right, isn't that wonderful? All right, so there is what you're looking at when you're calculating, I mean, that, 
calculating. That's really what you want to understand when you're calculating your critical frequency, right? So, the lower critical frequency is at the 3 dB point. And there it is, right? Star this. Because it's 3 dB below the mid-range. We talked about that when we went over Bode plots. You might want to review that if you, if you don't remember it. Alright? Okay, so let me get some space here if I can. Let me, uh have to take this off here. I have to take this off right here, I'm afraid. There we go. Now let's take this off here. Get you a little bit more space. And let's take this off here. Now let's go over the calculation of your critical frequency. So basically, your reactants, Xc1, is going to equal 1 divided by 2 pi, at your frequency lower at your in L, at your input, Sorry for that. I'm trying to make that as nice as I can, but I can't make it that nice. Times your capacitance, C1. There you go, right? And by the way, we just said at the critical frequency, what's that going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to Rn, isn't it? So this is going to equal Rn, right? Now, if you s remember, you can swap with math. So let's just bring R in on the other side, shall we? So we can say now that, um, let's do this one more time. I just feel like writing it like this. R in is going to equal one divided by two pi F C one in in times C1. So, now if we want to calculate the critical frequency, remember we can take this value right here, your, your frequency, we can take that, that's just FC1 in, that's what I tried to write there. Doggone, this is really C1 in, okay? Now, we can take that and we can swap it with this up here, right? This is a common math technique. So we can rewrite this then as F C1, which your input, CL, I'm sorry, it's a critical frequency lower, at your input going to equal 1 divided by 2 pi Rn times C1. Bingo. Now this is an important equation that you should really remember because you're going to need to know this for many calculations when you're calculating the critical frequency input, all right? I apologize for my writing. It's not as neat as it should be. But when we're talking about the critical lower frequency for your input, that's what this stands for, right? Rn, you know what Rn, because you, you know that your uh, reactance equals Rn at the critical frequency. There you go. Remember your resistance when you calculate this uh, for help. Remember, this is going to be in ohms, so R is going to be in ohms. And your capacitance is going to be in farads. 
So just be aware for that O H. It's an M. Should be an M there. O H M S and then farads. And your critical frequency F is going to come out in hertz. All right. Most problems that most problems that students run into when they're doing problems with this uh, is units. So just watch your units when you're doing this, all right? All right, so there's one case where you may want to include the source resistance, all right? So if you come across a problem where they're asking you to include the, the source resistance, that is very similar, all right? So the lower critical frequency of your input is basically, it's basically the same equation. It's 1 over 2 pi. And what you're going to do is you're going to add your source resistance to your input resistance times C1. There you go. There's your other equation. Most of the time the source resistance is so small it's not included. But sometimes you may want to. And right here is a drawing that shows your source right here and your source resistance right there. The source resistance would be just before the capacitor. All right, so this is what's coming out of your source. Generally, sources, you want to have a very low source resistance coming out, obviously. Um, but sometimes they might, might not be neglectable. So, all right, folks, I will see you shortly, and we'll start talking about the output frequency calculation. All right, everybody, so let's start talking about the output critical frequency, shall we? So for this to take place, this is going to be F C L output. Remember that's an L right here. This is an L that stands for lower C critical frequency. All right, remember we just did the input, right? So now we're going to do the output. So with the output critical frequency, we're going to redraw the circuit, OK? But the output critical frequency utilizes this part of the circuit, all right? This is your load resistor. This is your output coupling capacitor, C3. And it's going to utilize your collector resistor right here all right so let's redraw the circuit shall we so let's look at the output you have your output from your collector comes through your capacitor this is C3 and then it comes down to RL to ground, right? We just redrew this part right here. Now remember, for AC signals, VCC looks like an AC ground. So, your resistor, or your collector resistor, I should say, is going to ground, right? And then, if we come out over here, you notice this part is a transistor, but it's known as, it can be thought of as a current source, all right? So you're going to have a current source coming through the ground, all right? Now, think about it. We think back to Norton and Thevenin.
this can be redrawn, right? So let's redraw that. This also can be drawn as a variable circuit. I mean, that's an AC signal, right? AC source coming through. Then you have RC. This is RC. Now this then is the same, the rest of the circuit's the same. It goes through your capacitor, down through your load resistor, down to ground, right? RL, and this is C3. So I'm gonna do a, put a box around this. We just redrew that portion, all right? There you go. Now, what we're looking at, and this is very similar to your input RC circuit, we're looking for that critical frequency, aren't we? And it's, very, it's a very similar formula, right? So, FCL output, that should be a small L, by the way. There's AC circuits in the text I'm using, in most texts, I believe, reference them as lowercase, DC is uppercase. So there you go, there you go, CL. And this is output is going to equal one divided by two pi. Then we have RC plus RL times your capacitor. And this is in this case it's going to be C3. And there is your equation. Alright. If you look at the input critical frequency, this is almost identical to that. Remember you use your source resistance plus your input resistance. Well, in this case, it's your collector resistor plus your load resistor. But if you remember, this circuit right here looks almost identically the same, doesn't it? It's what the other one was, because it's RC, RC in series with C3 in series with RL. Right? All right, so that is your equation for your output critical frequency. It's pretty straightforward. And again, resistance, your R is in ohms, capacitance is in farads, all right? And your result will be in hertz. Okay, everyone, so next we're going to do uh, the work, work on the bypass RC circuit to get the critical frequency all right, everybody, so let's look at the third and final circuit for this amplifier. This is called the bypass RC circuit. All right, now this circuit is right down here where it says bypass and let me just it's this circuit right here this is what we're, we're worried about okay so that's what we're going to be concentrating on so let me take that off there all right so let's go back and let's rewrite this circuit shall we so if we look at this part to the left of the base. I'm going to draw a little man here. And he's looking that way. So we have a bunch of resistors and we have a, a source. So this can be rewritten as source going to ground 
through a thevenized resistor. This is R thevenin going into your base, right? Here's your transistor. Now, I'm drawing this with an emitter. I'm going to actually draw R prime of E, right? Because there's a resistance in there for AC. Because we're talking AC. Now this, coming out of your emitter, right here, we are then going through your emitter resistor, RE, and I'm going to show this to you. You're going to have your other capacitor right across from it, right? So, we want to know what this resistance is. So, basically, if we're looking at the emitter, we're going to say Rn of the emitter, that's going to equal R prime of E, that's your emitter resistance, plus V of your emitter over I of your emitter. Remember, you're going to have a voltage here. I'm just going to draw it. VE. And you're going to have a current here. IE. Alright? Now remember from Ohm's Law, V equals IR. Right? So, if you divide both sides by I, R is equal to V over I. I'm sure you can convince yourself of that, right? So this is a resistance. So let's rewrite this. Basically, we're going through a proof. At this point, now you're going to do some substitution, substitutions and approximations to come up with a formula. That's basically what we're doing. So this is going to equal to R prime E plus, and by the way, I should put a squiggly here. It's approximately equal, because we're going to exchange V, v of your um, emitter. So we're going to make that approximately equal to VB. Now, for a silicone, we know it's a 0.7 volt difference, but we're going to go with it, all right? Now, I of your emitter, that's going to be equal to beta, right, times I of your base, right? IB. This then is approximate is going to be equal to um, R prime of E plus this is going to be I of your base times R that resistance, right, right here, right, I times R gives you a voltage right here, because you're going to have a voltage here, and it's going to be zero here, so you know you're going to have to have that voltage there, right? Let's just put a little man here, just to show you what I'm talking about. We have a little man here, call him base man, okay? So you know if you have current going through here, and it's going to zero, uh, it's going to be zero, that that current times that resistance is going to be the voltage at this point. Now, by the way, I apologize, I didn't show you something. When you're going to do an evaluation for resistance, this source here, this source actually gets replaced by a, by a short. I apologize for that. I should have said that earlier. Um, okay. So if you have ground over here, you know that potential at this point, if it's ground here and you have a base current, you know that base current times that resistance, you must have a voltage there of IB, okay? This is what we just drew here. And then you can 
carry this denominator over, it's going to be beta IB. Now, I'm going to change colors here. What happens here? These IBs can cancel out, right? So now you're going to be left with an equation that your R and of your emitter, I'm going to rewrite this, That's going to be equal to R prime of E plus R TH over beta. Got it? So there's one of your formulas right there. There, right? Now, we aren't done yet. I'm going to take that formula and move it over here to the left for you. Let's just move it over here. Now, if you look at the drawing we made, right? Now we have to account for... There we go. Get rid of that one. We're going to have to account for your emitter resistor here, right? And we didn't do that. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to see. So at this point where we're standing, it's pretty straightforward to see now that if you have a resistance that's going this way, you also have one in parallel with it, R prime of E, right? All right, so at this point, if you inspect the circuit, the critical bypass frequency, the critical frequency, FCL, the lower, of the bypass circuit, bypass, is really equal to 1 divided by 2 pi. Now comes the resistance, right? We have R prime E plus RTH over beta. Got it? This is going to be in parallel with R prime of E. I'm sorry, RE, your resistance emitter. Because look at it, you're standing right here. Right here is where you're, you're, talk, you're looking at. So that current that's coming out, if you have a resistance that you just figured out here, it's also going to be in parallel with your emitter resistance. That's why they're in parallel, okay? And you're gonna take that value and you're gonna multiply it times the capacitor here, right? And here's your capacitor. This is your critical frequency formula for your bypass circuit. Now, there's one thing I want to go over with you. I'm going to take this out. out of here right now. Let's get some space. Now, this is the one question that usually comes up, is what is RTH? Right? So, R Thevenin, if you look back at this case, right? That's going to equal R1 in parallel with R2. In parallel with, if you have it, your source resistance. Because remember what we just talked about, when you're evaluating the total resistance, remember your source right here is rep when evaluating it. When evaluating it, it actually is replaced by a short, okay? So those are the three methods to ground, and that would be your thevenin or your, your resistance there. 
So now you have all the pieces, really. Um, I think you now at this point, if you think about it, you are going to have three critical frequencies for your amplifier. That's something that you need to take into account when you're looking at a circuit. Because if you have a Bode plot, a Bode plot, I'm sorry, I mispronounced that, right? A Bode plot, and you have three critical frequencies. Suppose this is your mid-range right here. That's just your mid-range. And here's your frequencies down here, right? Suppose, let's just choose arbitrary values. Suppose this is one critical frequency, this is a critical frequency, and this is a critical frequency. So that means Looking coming in here. You know, I think I gotta come the other way, I'm sorry. We're coming this way. So this is gonna have it's gonna come down at twenty dB per per decade, right? So here's your slope, right? It's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down, it's linear. Now when it hits this point, the next one, whatever that happens to be, your slope is going to go to forty. So you see it gets steeper. I don't think I drew this very well because we're not going to make it. But at every, I mean, if I increase the Bode plot, we could. It would just get more, uh, your, your slope then would change from 40 to 60. So here your slope is 20. Here your slope, this here your slope is 40. And then with the third one, your slope would be would be 60. And that's at this point right here at that critical frequency. I wanted to make sure that I stated that because if you're going to be drawing these Bode plots, you need to know that. All right? All right, everyone. So that is a discussion about the critical lower frequency for your BJT amplifier, all right? I hope this has been helpful to you, and I'll see you when we start talking about upper critical frequencies. Thank you.